We're going to tie a beautiful little universally effective uh, soft hackle. This is olive. Uh, I'm going to be using the, uh, these are freshly available, hairline hen cape. These are, you know, we got them browns, uh, natural. Uh, this is olive. Um, I forget, uh, brown, whatever. We got several colors. I'm partial to an olive. I also like the plain brown. So this is tied on a TMC wet fly hook. This is a fly I really like to fish for summer steelhead. So I'm going to tie it on a size 8. Trowel, I like. Sea run cutthroat, I think it would also yeah. work well. Well, it's also a summer steelhead fly. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's kind of an, it, since yeah. it's October nearly. Oh, yeah. Fine. It's amazing how small a fly or how a steelhead will respond very positively to a very small swinging wet fly. So I've got a, a six aught thread here, and just to be just totally overboard, you know. I went through years where I shunned super glue and now I'm like a super glue freak. Got some copper wire. You could use an oval silver, oval gold. Uh, I'd go for something s on the small side. And this is, this happens to be a Whitlock SLF uh, Fox Squirrel dubbing. Uh, if I had my Norvice here, I would have this dubbing spun on so fast, fly would be finished. But I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. And having a little underlayment of the super glue just it really locks in that um, really locks in the dubbing. And this uh, this wire is so fine. You really won't see it. It just adds to the durability because considering you are likely to hook 15 or 20 summer steelhead per day, it'll come in handy. Yeah. Wow. Here, here's Sign a, me up. <laughs> Sign me up too. Uh, so here are these little, these little hen cape. Now they have hen backs as well as sa hen saddles as well. I kind of trim these up. Now sometimes if you tie in way up here, you may find your hackle stem twisting. Uh, I'm going to find out if I can go up that high without having the stem twist on me. And I'm going to try to fold that hackle just a little bit. And by folding, I just mean kind of running a, a crease so it is kind of V-shaped. And uh, s considering that this fly is about a tenth of the size of most of the flies I'm tying these days, I'm going to use my hackle pliers. So right now, that's, that those hackles are not behaving nicely, but they're going to. So I'm going to pull that set back. And Seems now, like on these hen capes, uh, you've got a good size range. Oh yeah, small to yeah, yeah. Large. So this is uh, this is one of the larger feathers on the cape. I'm pretty confident they've got. Uh, I'm, I've been looking at these capes, and they they're very nice. They're very very consistent. Um, Down to a 16, would you say? Oh, de de definitely, definitely to the 16. Uh, I think um, going to 18s, I'd, I'd have trouble. So, you know, one of the things in tying a fly like this is, is if you look at this fly, my craftsmanship wasn't quite as good. Uh, the, I, the head is longer than I would prefer. It's still going to fish quite well. But I'm really much more pleased with the way this fly has worked out proportion-wise. I feel like I had just the right amount of body and taper and hackle. I'm really pleased with that. So, trout, steelhead, panfish, tarpon, beware. There you go. So, one of the things I forgot to mention about this, the, the hen capes, is that... Um, 
I think they're very reasonably priced and you get a, I think you get a wider assortment of sizes than you do with even a, a number one partridge uh, ca uh, cape or uh, number one partridge. Uh, you'll see maybe really 14s through 12s. Get tens, it's pretty hard. Sixteens uh, and eighteens, it's it's. I don't I don't think they exist. These hen capes, they make wonderful wet flies, wet flies, soft tackles, and I think a broader range of sizes. So that's something to keep in mind.